Today we're going to talk about how to plan out or how to map out your dahlia garden. This video is going to go beyond the basics, not just how to grow dahlias, but if you're interested in growing more dahlias for cut flower production or tuber production, or if you just want to expand your dahlia collection, you're getting too many dahlias, you need to start uh, you know, having a little bit of a system for it. I'm going to talk about how I map out my dahlia farm every year and some of the things I've learned just over the years through trial and error uh, about just spacing things out, planning it out, laying it out. My name is Eve Hanlon, by the way. I'm a dahlia farmer from the Pacific Northwest corner of the United States. I've been growing dahlias for 10 or 11 years, something like that. I, I really need to count and see exactly how many years it's been. Uh, so the first year I grew dahlias, I killed almost all of them. I've learned so much over the years. A lot of it has been trial and error. So I hope that this video, uh, I can share what I've learned and it also, you know, I hope it saves you a little bit of that same trial and error. When preparing to make this video today, I started by sitting down and just writing down everything I could think of that could be helpful for you when planning out your garden, everything I keep in mind when planning out my dahlia garden. So I've got my computer right here, I've got my list right here. It ended up being a lot of bullet, just bulleted ideas and concepts. So we're going to, going to jump from topic to topic quite a bit uh, as we move through this video today, and I'll have the visuals up on the screen as well. But if you have any additional questions about things that we go over here, please comment them below this video. Please also scroll through the comments real quick uh, and see if your question's already been asked. And I, yeah, I'd love to help out if I can. And also your comment might become the topic of one of my next videos. Thank you so much. Let me know, let me know how I can help. When planning what to grow each year, uh, usually finding new varieties, new dahlia varieties to grow is one of the easiest parts. Uh, for my farm, I try to find things that are popular or try to find colors and shapes that I don't already have to kind of expand the collection so I have a lot of different things to offer my customers. And uh, also, if you're growing for cut flowers, it's good to pay attention to wedding trends, uh, the color of the year, things like that. One of the hardest parts of planning what dahlia varieties to grow each year is uh, deciding what not to grow. If you're anything like me, you probably have limited space for growing dahlias. So uh, if I'm adding something, oftentimes something has something has, has to go. So I pay attention to what has been selling well, what grows, uh, you know, produces the most flowers, what's healthy, what produces the most tubers, and uh, also what you know people are what people are looking for, and what my customers are looking for as well. The hardest part is deciding what what to scale back, what not to grow, because really I want to grow everything, but I have, I have to be realistic. Every year I have a trial row in my garden and I sort this more or less by height, but I really, I don't spend much time on it. I just pay attention to if I have any really short varieties. I want to put them together. I want to make sure that they have space so, you know, they don't get uh, sandwiched between two really tall varieties and just kind of get smothered out. So the really short ones I put on one end and then I just uh, kind of space everything out, uh, the, all the taller varieties off, uh, you know, for, through the rest of the row. Then in uh, you know a peak growing season when everything's in bloom, I go down this list. I pull the uh, plant stake or the tag out of the ground, and I take a picture of that with the bloom. And I spend uh, you know it takes maybe an hour or two, but I just go through and I take notes about how each of these varieties are uh, doing in my garden. Uh, if they're producing blooms, if you know how those blooms look, how they're holding up in vases, uh, and just super informal process. I don't spend a ton of time on this. Some people really do. They really do these tests and uh, experiment, but I just kind of go with my gut, see what's doing well, and sometimes things won't do super well the first year, they'll do better the second year, but other times I'll grow something and I'll be like, yeah, like this, this isn't what I was looking for. I keep all the trial varieties together in one place uh, just to make this process of reflection and evaluation easier. And also uh, because I don't really know, I don't have the names of the varieties memorized. If I have one bloom, you know, kind of one, one variety, one plant of one variety mixed in with all of my other varieties, uh, I'll forget it's there. I'll forget to take notes on it. I, I won't remember, I won't remember what it is. So just keeping, keeping everything, all of the new varieties in one place, just, it really helps to keep things organized. When spacing your dahlias for cut flower and tuber production, you can put the dahlia plants a little bit closer together than you might expect. Uh, I tend to do mine uh, kind of in a zigzag formation, spaced about every, uh, in, they're about 18 inches apart. Um, so I have a two and a half foot row and I just kind of zigzag them uh, like, like pictured here. So uh, some other people will do them a little bit different. Uh, this is how Florette does her dahlias. So she spaces them out like this. If you have more space, you want to give your your dahlia plants a little bit more room. You could give them, you know, around two feet uh, is something that a lot of people will do. 
You could give them a little bit more than that. If you uh, have plants that get to be really massive, that could be good. But I, th I think around two feet is probably plenty. 18 inches I'm really happy with. Again, Florette does 12 inches. So uh, it, totally up to you. Depends on how much space you have. But this, you can actually, you can put them closer together than you might expect. You end up with like a hedge of dahlias essentially. What's nice is when you have these rows, you can put, uh, you know, T posts throughout. You can kind of, uh, you know, run string through them, or you can do posts on all the corners and kind of have this like rectangle, like a trough. So again, it's like it's like having a hedge of dahlias, if that if that makes sense. And I just want to mention a few additional notes about spacing dahlias. This is how I spaced my dahlias on my tuber farm. So I'm going to be digging and dividing these dahlias up each year. So if you don't plan on digging and dividing, uh, then you're, you're going to want to give them just a little bit more space. And out in a garden, uh, in your landscape, if you're not going to dig or uh, divide your dahlias, then you should give your plants, you could give your plants uh, about three feet of space each. Though I do recommend you dig and divide your dahlias up about every three years for optimum health. Regarding pathway width, uh, in my garden I do two feet and it's really narrow. You don't have a lot of room to get between plants because uh, they pl the plants will kind of lean in, of course, you know, especially if you're not uh, tying them up or trellising them much. It's the plants are going to lean in, so it ends up your pathways end up being slightly smaller than you make them. Something in that range is going to be a little bit tighter. So if you want to get a wheelbarrow through, I would do more like three and a half feet, uh, just just because again these plants are going to lean in around the outside edge of my dahlia rows. I have a three foot pathway, three you know three uh, sides around the big rectangle, and then one side I have a four foot pathway, so that I actually have a little bit of room if I want to set up like. A table or something like I actually have a chance of getting uh, navigating around that a little bit. I like to keep it tight to make as much use of space as possible but give yourself a little breathing room if you want to make it easier to to navigate through there. To make my map every year I have an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can do a Google Sheets of course, um, all numbers, all there's so many options but uh, yeah I so I like to do this. I have two tabs. One tab I have a list of all of the varieties that I grow. I keep track of you know, if I have a code associated with the tubers that I mark the tubers with, I have that with the variety name. I keep track of how many I plant each year. When I divide dahlias, I also keep track of my inventory. I try to keep the ugly tubers to uh, replant every year and then I sell the, the prettier looking ones each year. So I keep track of like the, the ugly keepers and then the pretty seller tubers. If I really am being organized, then when I dig the dahlias up each year, I'll actually keep track of how many plants of each variety I ended up digging up at the end of the year because from that I can figure out a productivity rate from each variety. But most most years, you know, it might be November, it's pouring down rain, it's cold, I'm trying to just get the dahlias dug up and it can be difficult to keep a really careful count of every single variety, how many plants of every single variety. It really slows down the digging process. So some years this doesn't happen. I really like when it does happen, but some years I, yeah, I just don't keep track of these numbers like I would like to. In the second tab, I have my dahlia map. And I like to do it this way where I have a variety name on the left and then the quantity on the right. And then I uh, always indicate which way's north. I number my rows. I give my, my note, you know, my rows a name. I like to lay it out this way so that at the top of the spreadsheet I can have it add up, automatically add up all of the varieties in that row. So for me, you know, I know that my row is going to be a certain length. I know how many varieties more or less I can fit in that row. So then as I'm laying out my plan for that year, I can rearrange things and try to, uh, you know, I just copy and paste the the, the variety name and, and the quantity planted and I'll just rearrange this map and move things around until I get those numbers looking pretty close to what I have space for. Then I'll delete the extra cells, neaten it up, and that will be my planting plan. I used to do all of this by hand, but you know, as my uh, collection started to get a little bit bigger, as I start to have these larger numbers, it was just, just being able to add up the total quantities for each row made such a big difference. If you're interested in uh, getting a copy of the spreadsheet, I'm trying something really new in this video. I've got the whole uh, opt-in form thing, uh, so you can go to the link in the description below this video, sign up, and I'll send you, uh, there'll be like an automated email that you'll get uh, with a copy of this spreadsheet, like a template that I've cleaned up, so that you can start using the same spreadsheet. I'll have some formulas in there as well. So and that will also add you to my Dahlia newsletter list, where I send out monthly Dahlia growing tips and information, uh, like seasonally relevant information 
information too so you can kind of plan uh, what you're going to be doing in your dahlia garden that time of year like I'll send you information about how to prune your dahlias uh, right before the time that you would be pinching or topping your dahlias just as an example so you can sign up for that link is in the description below uh, I've got the spreadsheet uh, link as well as just the newsletter link if you don't want the spreadsheet uh, below this video and of course you can opt out at any time unsubscribe at the bottom of the emails at any time Another common question, uh, if you're putting your dahlias in rows, do you put those rows north to south or east to west? So technically you're supposed to do them north to south, that's what I've read. If you do your rows north to south, the sun moves over those rows, then you get sun on all, all sides of those dahlia plants. So I've always done mine uh, east, east to west. Since I first started, I've been doing it wrong technically, but uh, they've been fine. They've been fine uh, the whole time. So I, I do try to put the tall dahlias to the north and the shortest dahlias I am careful to put uh, like at the southern end of the garden so that you know you don't get too much shading. That, that could be an issue, but for I don't stress out a ton about height. The really short ones in the front, really tall ones in the back, but everything in between, I really, I don't stress out about that much. And it, it really always turns out, it really always turns out fine. Another thing, uh, in my area, I live in like a little bit of a valley, so the wind tends to move east to west. So that, that could be an important important thing to pay attention to. I wonder sometimes, I nev have never had powdery mildew on my dahlias uh, yet, so hopefully that doesn't happen, but I wonder if by having the rows laid out east to west, my uh, the wind typically moves east to west in my area, if that kind of helps maybe decrease the need for staking, maybe that helps with airflow, air circulation, decreases the chance of fungal problems. I have no idea, I have not tested this, I've probably just gotten lucky, but that, that might be something worth considering. Now let's talk about how to lay out the patch based on uh, different colors or varieties, how to arrange everything. The first couple of years I grew dahlias, I wanted to have this really nice, uh, colorful, like rainbow randomized look. So that's what I did. I randomized all of the dahlia tubers, uh, but that created, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful, but it really created a bit of a nightmare when digging up varieties because then I would have to re-sort them back together. I also had to make sure every single plant was very carefully labeled with its own individual tag and if any single tag got lost I had you know I might have a map but sometimes it was difficult to figure out what what that variety was so I now sort my varieties uh, you know by I have entire stretches of varieties so I know that between this point and this point everything that's in between is going to be that same variety uh, of course with dahlias once they're dormant there's no way to identify what that variety was if you can't do it through trial and error you don't have a label there's just no way to know so if that's important to you keeping careful track of what you've got then I don't recommend the randomizing method I keep likes together with likes Sometimes I will break up if I have, you know, I grow a lot of lollipop dahlia tubers. It's one of my favorites. It's so productive for cut flowers. So instead of having like 60 red plants in a row, I'll do 30 over here and 30 over there. And uh, I just do that with a few varieties. I, for the most part, just have one section of each color. When laying out the map or the plan, first thing I do is I sort the, the very tallest dahlia varieties, the ones that I know grow to be monsters, I put on the northern end, and then the ones that are the shortest, the ones I know that are going to be very short, I put on the southern end. And besides that, I, I put some of my very favorites, the ones that produce the most cut flowers, I tend to put on the ends. The ones that I cut from a lot, that I deadhead a lot, that uh, I just like to see the most, I tend to put on the ends. But from there, I will more or less arrange the patch based on a uh, common bouquet combination. So I have some like guidelines or recipes for when I make my bouquets. I'll put a lot of reds and yellows and oranges together, for example. I'll put pastels together. So as I'm laying out the center rows, I'll try to kind of uh, combine these like variety, the things I want to put together in bouquets, I'll try to put in the same general regions. Again, this is not a perfect system. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if I, I know I'm going to be using a lot of the similar things in certain bouquets, I will try to make it as convenient as possible. If you want to breed certain varieties through hand pollination, it could also make sense for you to put uh, those varieties that you, you're you going to be cross-pollinating, uh, put those together so that's extra convenient. 
keeping track of different Dahlia varieties, keeping everything labeled properly, uh, very carefully is also important. So if you have a little extra space, you could plan a like a little gap in between different varieties. If you're trellising, you could maybe perhaps build your trellising structure so that uh, maybe there's, you know, a post or something at every point that the Dahlia variety switches, because that can make it so much easier when you're digging up Dahlias in, in the winter when everything's dormant, everything looks the same. It, if you can build in any of these uh, other indicators that your variety is switching, that can, that can be helpful. I just use uh, little wooden stakes and I write on them with a Sharpie what that variety is and then in the summer I'll go through and if any uh, dahlia plants are growing really close together I'll kind of mark so that uh, if they're yeah if they're overlapping that I'll put little flagging tape when ver one variety ends and the next variety starts so that when everything goes dormant then it's a little bit easier to dig things up. If you can, try to plant some additional things besides dahlias that attract beneficial insects. Monocultures of dahlias are great for attracting pests because that pest can just move from one plant to the next and just spread all through. Uh, and if you have plants in the like the carrot family or the parsley family, and uh, there are so many lists online of plants that attract beneficial insects, like uh, I, if I'm saying this correctly, tachnid flies that will you know lay its eggs and things like cucumber beetles. Uh, these beneficial insects are wonderful to attract as much as possible to your dahlia patch. It's one of those things, little things that can kind of help maintain a little bit of balance against pests. Sometimes I'll even do, it's it's kind of weird, but something I'll do some years is I'll just go through and I'll plant uh, like spread cilantro or parsley seeds and then let, I'll harvest some of those herbs, but then I'll let the plants go to seed. And that just increases, you know, in these little tiny spaces when I don't have a ton of room, it just can increase the opportunity for me to have something that attracts uh, beneficial insects. If you're a cut flower farmer, you probably have tons of plants to grow, uh, all kinds of things, but I'm mostly a dahlia farmer. So I actually have a special corner of my dahlia patch where I have at least half a row, if not a whole row, every year where I plant things besides dahlias to use as fillers or accents in my in my bouquets and arrangements. I have a purple penstemon plant that I love. It produces blooms all summer. I have a persicaria that I love. I've got some sedum, autumn joy. I do a ton of zinnias. Uh, Cosmos sometimes, I'll do Zinni or, uh, Snapdragon sometimes as well, just to have some little extra things to add some interest to bouquets, just, just for fun. Something new I'm trying this year that I'm excited about uh, is a rotational cover cropping system. So I'm partnering with a friend to grow uh, some tubers so that uh, that freed up a little bit more space in my dahlia patch this year since, you know, she's grown some in her in her space and I'm growing some in my space. My patch doesn't need to be as large to serve the same amount of customers. So what I am planning on doing, we'll see how it goes. I'm planning on having a section of my dahlia garden every year just be uh, cover crops. So then I can rotate, I can run um, a couple of rounds of cover crops maybe some nitrogen fixtures, some like uh, some cover crops that are really good at producing a ton of organic matter to, you know, uh, that'll just build up the soil structure. It'll add fertility. Uh, and then every year, then I can kind of switch back and forth. So cover cropping, of course, it builds soils. Uh, it can break pest life cycles a little bit too. Just overall, it's a great practice. I have a lot to learn. I haven't figured out exactly what species of, you know, plants I'm going to be putting or using in my dahlia garden, how I'm going to time it out. So I have a bit of research to do, but I'm really excited to be able to do this uh, because I have had been growing this monoculture of dahlias in the same place uh, year after year. And it's been fine, but I am just seeing an increase in pests and I want to do, uh, you know, build soil in other ways besides just like always bringing in materials. Uh, so I'm really excited about this. If you have some experience using cover crops and dahlias or you have a system set up for that, I'd love to learn from you. Please let me know. Uh, if you also, if you figured out a cover crop that works after you dig your dahlias up, that's something I really am going to experiment with because you dig your dahlias up later in the season. It's after there's been a, a like a light frost uh, or two. And at that point, it's not really typically recommended that you plant cover crop seeds out. So I want to start experimenting with things that might be able to fill in that, uh, you know, the garden space all winter long when my dahlias, you know, when, they're, when they aren't there that I can then till in right before planting time. I want to talk about mulch. Planting out your mulch is really important. Mulching is extremely important in any garden, in dahlias as well. Uh, I've tr experimented with a ton of different mulching materials, but I haven't figured out the perfect system yet. I did like using landscape fabric in the pathways and kind of pinning them down with metal stakes. That really helped uh, neaten things up, saved me a lot of time on weeding. One quick note regarding uh, landscape fabric 
if you are going to order a roll that's a certain width, you should probably plan ahead and make sure that your pathways are that same width. That will that will save you quite a bit of time cutting or folding landscape fabric, just, just depending how you order it. Keep that in mind. I use Arbor's Chip Mulch all the time. There's uh, Arbor's Chip Mulch is amazing if you can get your hands on it. I highly recommend that in your Dahlia garden. Any kind of wood chip mulch, bark mulch, uh, besides black walnut, of course. You could use straw. Just make sure you use herbicide-free uh, straw as mulch. That can have an effect on your dahlias. Um, no hay. Hay can contain a lot of seeds. You could also use sawdust or wood shavings. Uh, there's a ton of different mulch options out there, but that's something that you should be planning on uh, ahead of time before your dahlias come up because it could be really good like immediately after you prepare your soil, you plant your dahlias to get that mulch on as soon as possible. That will help you with weeding tremendously. So uh, yeah, plan ahead on that. Order materials in ahead of time if you need to. That should be another important part of your planning process. I wanted to talk briefly about growing dahlias in containers. During the planning process, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just plan on putting some of the shorter varieties in containers instead of in the ground. This just gives me a little bit more space in my dahlia patch. You can grow any dahlia in a container, uh, any dahlia in a raised bed. You just, uh, for the larger varieties, you just need to give them an, a big enough pot. And also if it's a taller variety, you're going to want to trellis that. Tomato cages work great for trellises for dahlias in containers and kind of minimum pot size, five gallons, 18 inches in diameter or larger if you can. Just because dally root systems get to be so large, you need to have a big enough pot to support that. This video definitely jumped all over the place a little bit, but these are some tips uh, that might help you plan or map out your dahlia garden. I hope you got something helpful out of it. Let me know if you did in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions, topics you'd like me to expand on, uh, yeah, tell me all about that, comments below this video. Uh, I have some links to additional resources. Uh, I've got some blog posts, like uh, an overview of how to grow dahlias, how to identify eyes on the dahlia tuber. Um, I've got some additional videos on like uh, winter dahlia winter care, how to to uh, divide your dahlia tubers. I have a couple videos on those as well. And also, if you're interested, I have my dahlia growing newsletter. Uh, that's It's about monthly at this point, and I send out seasonal dahlia growing tips and tricks. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for that. Again, linked, linked below this video. Good luck planning out your dahlia garden this year, and thank you so much for watching.